Well, good morning. We're going to look at Psalm 100 today. I'd like to go right into it. My plan is real simple. We'll read through it. I'm going to talk in two parts with it. Uh, we'll look first at this why we sing and shout to the Lord, and then second, we'll apply what can keep us from wanting to shout to the Lord, because it's easy to be distracted from Thanksgiving and, and to get caught up in the troubles of the world and then not want to do this song. So I'm going to just read through it real quick, and so kind of meditate on it as we go through. So a psalm for giving grateful praise or a psalm for this giving of this thankfulness shout for joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness or the other way it can be said is serve the lord with gladness come before him with joyful songs know that the lord is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name for the lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations okay let's go back to that first verse i just want to talk about this this idea of, of shouting to the lord now you've probably heard the old song by the temptations it's called shout and it goes something like this keep my heels up and shout throw your hands up and shout throw my head back and shout come and now shout don't forget to say you will shout you probably all heard that particular song and the hebrew word in this psalm, shout is much the same way. I looked it up in the Hebrew this morning, and it's defined as ru'ah, or to shout or make a loud noise. So as in, so if, if you're going to follow what this psalm says, you can't just sit back and hide. you got to be right out. And this isn't just any kind of shouting. But it's, it's, it's being heard by everybody. Well, welcome, Carol. Welcome, Sherry. <laughs> Just come in. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Oh, it's good to have you with us. So we're just looking at Psalm 100. We're going to go back through and read it one more time this morning. Um, but we're the very first verse says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Or... A literal translation would be this, shout for joy to Yahweh, all you lands or all the earth. So the, this word shout has been used a number of times in the scripture and probably the most familiar one is when you remember they were going around Jericho. Each day they would go around one time and then on the seventh day they marched around it seven times and then at the end, do you remember what he said? You're to shout. And it's the same word for shout there. And the whole city trembles and the walls come tumbling down. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, it's more than the shouting that takes it down. It's the Lord who takes the city wall down. So the word ruah um, is not subtle. It's not some measured sound. It's dignified or refined. So... This kind of goes against what you think of as dignified worship. This is loud, and it's kind of this to raise the roof, if you will. Uh, they are to praise the Lord with the wondrous things he has done, the victories he's given day after day. But they're not just to shout. Notice it says shout to the Lord with joy. So you've probably been to a ball game or, uh, or you think of it as war and they'll shout. But this, this is different. This isn't just about uh, let's win the ball game or let's win the war. This is, this is joy because the Lord is the one who gives the victory. Um, and you can't keep it pent up inside because he is so good. Um, 
Got one other comment on this. Uh, as you think of the, if you look at that song by the temptations, shout, kick my heels up, shout, throw my hands up, shout, throw my head back, shout, come now, shout. Uh, why, why was that song written? Do you remember? Because of a woman. Oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah, you got to yeah, you gotta remember it. <laughs> so that's why they're shouting. But or or to have a good time, shout. But this is different. We're shouting because of what the Lord has done. And he brings us joy. So, but what would keep us from shouting to the Lord? Um, I wrote down four different things, and you can add to it. Uh, but yes. embarrassment, people don't like to uh, look funny. Remember King David, his, one of his wife, wives uh, was embarrassed because David was making a fool of himself dancing before the Lord. So embarrassment sometimes, oh, I couldn't dare open my mouth and sing or shout in front of the church because they might see me. Well, that's kind of the idea. <laughs> the people would see. In fact, um, emotions. Some people don't like to let their emotions loose so that others would see their emotions. Um, they might be embarrassed of their laugh or their smile. But there was a, a fellow by the name of CFW Walther. Um, he's a pastor in our church body. He's been, he's died about a hundred years ago, but I always liked him. Um, and I liked him. Well, I know him by what he writes <laughs> written down. <laughs> but CFW Walther, he he wrote on this. He said that um, you shouldn't be embarrassed by your emotions because emotions are a God-given gift. Um, now you shouldn't make your faith dependent on your emotions, though. So, for example, if you're feeling down, you shouldn't say, "Well." God must not be good because I feel down. Because emotions are usually based on what we experience. So if you experience good things, you're going to have good emotions. If you experience bad things, like you're sick, you often don't feel emotionally very good. So you don't want to make your faith dependent on emotions. Your, your faith should de be dependent on truth. So when you read the Bible... You hear that truth and you feel good. That, that's those are emotions that are based on truth. Uh, so that's why you can have joy even when everything is going poor in your life. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. So that's what I mean by that. Another reason that could cause us not to shout is that it feels repetitive. Well, I already shouted when I was baptized. Or I already shouted when uh, at the first worship service I went to. I've already done that. I don't need to do oh, it. Thank you. Well, oh, what time was it? To be honest, uh, we should shout all the time, not just when the first time, but even when it's the second, the third, the tenth, the hundredth time we can shout. Um, so, for example, there was a young man uh, asked his wife to marry him over the loudspeaker at Co-America Park. How many times have you seen that happen through the years? Yet that same man had trouble saying personally to his wife, I love you. And I, th and I think the same is true with God. We can get up and say it when you've got the big crowd, but, but we can say I love you to God and shout to him even when it's a small group as well so or how about this one sin can get in the way of shouting yeah. to the lord and i think this is probably one of the biggest ones we have sin on our mind it's bothering us we're aching and then we can't shout because we're feeling unworthy and so the world will tell us you shouldn't be doing yeah yeah and so instead of shouting to the lord we say oh lord I'm an unfit, unworthy sinner. But that's where you want to start if you have to. Call on the Lord for forgiveness. And what does he do? If you say you have no sin, 
you deceive yourselves, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins to God, he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as he cleanses us, then we can shout to the Lord because he forgives our sins. So, but it can be difficult from time to time. Oh, I got to tell you this story I found today. This is, this is good. It's an old story. It's about a young man who wasn't feeling very good about himself, so he couldn't shout to the Lord. So he says, I'm poor, and I'm, I'm more poor than ever this year. If you don't believe me, go ask my family, my poor mom and my poor dad. And if you don't believe them, ask our poor gardener and ask our poor butler and our yeah, poor yeah. chauffeur and our poor housekeeper. They will all tell you we are all poor. <laughs> we did not have much extra money this year. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, we're really very rich because of what God has done. Okay. Anyway, just to get you laughing a little bit this morning, uh, let's go back to the psalm. Uh, and I'm going to have you read, all of you read a little bit out of here. Uh, so we did verse one, shout to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Shout to the Lord. Notice again that the Lord is capitalized here. This is the un, so-called unpronounceable name of God, the great I am, Yahweh, or sometimes called Jehovah, if you put vowels in his name. But this, this isn't directed to God or some unknown God. This is the known God. God, the, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He's um, Yeshua, Jesus. I mean, we could uh, put his name here because this is the Lord that appears, that, that acts. Um, so, and then notice it says, shout to joy to the Lord, all the earth. And the word for earth here, I looked this up as well. It's the word, it's the real simple everyday word for earth, uh, aretz. Um, and aretz can refer to the whole world, but it can also refer to the, the area around you, the, the, the land. And, and so it refers both to people and to the, the, the place, so the ground. So, and we've seen this before in the Bible, right? That when, when praise goes on, if people don't praise him, even the ground, the stones will praise him as well. So same idea. This, this Psalm is kind of together with Psalm 90. We've been looking at Psalm 94, 95, 96, 97. These are all kind of go together. And this one is calling the entire earth to praise. Him. Okay. Uh, verse two, uh, Don, you want to read today? Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do that one verse there. So the word worship here, I, I don't know if this is the best translation. Um, you're, if you pull up the King James Version, for example, they, they translate it serve. Uh, and I, I have my uh, little notes here. The word used in the Hebrew is avad, which can mean to work or to serve. And it can also refer specifically to the work we do in worship. Okay, so that's why some translations will translate it worship. Um, but you probably grew up memorizing this word is serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. So you can see that it's referring specifically to worship. But, but see, worship happens not just in the church building or in the temple, but worship happens in our everyday life, too, as we serve our neighbor. Uh, and we can we serve the Lord in that way in gladness. So uh, when used, this service of the Lord, it reminds us that our worship constitutes a significant part of our service to God. Uh, so he and 
you might say, well, I don't need to worship because it's not doing anything good. Isn't it more profitable to be out in the world helping my neighbor and feeding the sick and clothing the poor and taking care of those in need? Well, yeah, it's, it's really both. So when I hear people saying, but I'm not doing any good, it's, oh, Georgia's up. Good, good to hear, to see. Yeah. So it, it goes to show what is better, to pray for your neighbor or to serve your neighbor? Well, the answer is both. Um, your neighbor needs your prayers. In fact, I don't know how many times, and you've probably heard me say this before, but I get mad when, when I hear about somebody dying and, and they never asked for prayers, their family. It's like, if they're dying, why don't you ask for God to come into their life? Why don't you ask that he um, heal them or even have the pastor or elders come over and pray over them and, and maybe hear the word of God so that they're in heaven? I mean, it's, it's, it's really, yes, they need to be cared for. I don't disagree with that. They need, if they're sick, um, yeah, don't just pray. Go anoint them with oil. Go Give them medicine, do the things that they need. Uh, uh, but it, it's really both. So, so this serving the Lord, yeah, take the time in the church, but also take the time serving him, kind of like we talked a few weeks ago. Remember, serving Jesus also happens by going out and visiting the, the one in prison and uh, visiting the sick. And so it, it really happens in both ways. So yeah yeah that's, uh, serving. yep so we so we go out as well um come before him with joyful songs and again it, so earlier we were to shout to the lord here there's a time for a uh, song that is not necessarily shouting but it's joyful uh, it has its place before um, him as well Let's see, what else do I got? Oh, the word gladness. It's the word simha, which means uh, joy or rejoicing. Um, so there is a place for quiet, reflective worship. Um, remember Psalm 46, be still before the Lord and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. So there's a place just to stop. But there's also a place for joy. Um, and to kind of like when you go to church and you sing joy to the world, the Lord is come and it's loud and you got the big trumpets and organ and piano and guitar and it's great. There's a time for that. There's also a time to just stop and pray and reflect. So they both have a time. Um, oh, <laughs> this is an interesting thought. Could you imagine church that had no joy, no humor, and was always stern and gloomy? Everybody sits in their pew and just, oh. <laughs> There's a lot of churches like that. Yeah. Um, but there is a place. I don't know if I can do it without a smile. See, <laughs> it's, uh, but I think there was, there's been times in the history of the world where that was, and it's not bad to be stern and at times, but like this psalm says, there's a time for joy, uh, and yeah, for a laughter and yeah, it, when we're at a funeral, I'm not going to be up. But sometimes you are because yeah. you're remembering wonderful life. <laughs> well, okay. Lots yeah. Well, that that's true too. That's true too. I was listening on the radio the other day, and some of them church songs, mm -hmm. they're so, so dry, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was no praise or worship with them. Yeah. Just, now, if you're singing a song asking God for forgiveness, you can. <laughs> I'll let everybody see everybody else too. Yes. Um, 
so I mean, if you're asking for forgiveness, I mean, there's not there's a lot no of joy. Yeah. It just tells yes. me how to use the computer. Yes. It says. <laughs> <laughs> it's got how to turn it on. So, yeah. O N or E N D E R. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Howard, would you read the next verse? I'll see All if right. I can get that verse three. three. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us. We are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Okay. I always like this verse. Uh, <laughs> it's really simple and. My, he my Hebrew isn't terribly good, and I didn't even have to look up any words here. Uh, it just says, know that the Lord. Now, again, it's that Yahweh. It's the name of God here is God. So he's not just the Lord. He's God of the universe. Um, and it points out that he has made us. Uh, and we are his. So th this doesn't take a lot of explanation. But even though this is probably the simplest verse in the psalm, it's the reason that we shout to the Lord. It's the reason that we worship, that we serve, that we sing. Um, because he literally made us out of nothing. And we belong to him. Uh, we are not our own. We, or as it says in the New Testament, we were bought with a price by the blood of Christ Jesus. Um, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. If you go back to Genesis chapter 12, you can take your Bible for a second. This is the covenant promise of the Bible. Basically, what the entire Old Testament is based on is this concept that he is our God and we are his people. Uh, this is the promise that God gave to Abraham. Yeah, all the way back to Genesis. Yeah. So I'll let you kind of turn to that, but I love this verse. It's one of my, it's kind of the basis. You love a lot of verses. Yeah, I do love a lot of verses. Let's see if we. 12? Yeah, 12, I think. This Bible, it spreads things out quite a bit. So I probably even have it underlined in my Bible. Um, yeah, it's right. Chapter 12, verse 1. It says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. Remember, Abraham's living in Haran, and he's being told by God, okay, go to this new land, this promised land, and I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you okay so in other words he is going to be abraham's god and abraham is going to be the people of god uh, that that's this blessing and and in psalm see psalm 100 is echoing this exact same words we go back there in verse three so know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. In other words, we're the blessed people of God. And all people on earth will be blessed through Abraham. That's why all the Gentiles are blessed as they come through Jesus into the family. We become his sheep. So I think sheep here is a good thing because even though sheep have their way of doing their horrible things and running away from the shepherd. But when they are in his pasture, things are good. Being his people, not on our own. Okay. Let's uh, shift gears. And I want to look at the second half of the psalm. Uh, verse four. Uh, Carol, are you up for reading? Sure. 
Okay. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Okay. So here we've got a little bit of sh uh, a shift. So, so far we've been talking about shouting and singing and worshiping and serving. And the reason is he's our God. He's made us and we're his people. But so now we're told, go into the temple. Um, so when it refers to gates here, you might think of the gates of the city of Jerusalem. Then you might think of the gates of the temple. Because remember, around the temple are this uh, big sur surrounding. I kind of... <clears throat> see if I've got these written down, but, but we're to go into his courts. Let's see, where did I put that here? I've got a big old notes on this. Um, oops, I got my paper out of order. Oh, here we go. So these, these gates, you've you go when you go into the temple you first go into the court of the gentiles and that would be open to all the gentiles obviously and then there's the court of the women so the women have their place and then you've got the court of the israelites and that would be the place where the men would be and i was thinking about that back in the old days in the united states they always used to if you went into church you'd have the men sit on one side and the women sit on the other and yeah and I think that's modeled after this, uh, the idea of having these two different places. Then in the very center, you've got the court of the priests because they can only go into the where the sacrifices are made. And then finally, where no one can go, the holy of holies, except for once a year, the high priest. Except remember what Jesus, yeah. You, and yeah, there was this ceremonial to go into the court. You had to be ceremonially clean. Yeah. So not just anyone could go in. You had you couldn't touch a dead body. Uh, you can't even go into the city. Uh, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then he dies. Shoes or whatever. You know. Yeah. And so. No one could go in there except the. Yeah. So there's these levels. To go into the the deeper parts of the temple but remember jesus though he makes it so that we can go all the way to the holy of holies and that's why it's so significant that in the bible um, when jesus died the temple curtain that is that that was torn into two thus you could go from the holy place into the holy of holies and this was then opened not just to the high priest, but to every believer is now able to go in because of Jesus. Yeah. And that's why the scriptures calls every Christian in the book of Peter a holy priest or a, a priesthood and a holy nation. So every so you and I, because of Jesus, are now able to approach God direct. Yeah. Because of Jesus. We yeah. Without yeah, yeah, we wouldn't be able to enter at all. And and so when you read this psalm, it really apply applies to us. The only way an Israelite can go into the gates of Thanksgiving is if they follow all these rituals and sacrifices to be able to go in. Um, but now we're able to go into the th with the Thanksgiving because of Jesus and give him praise. Um, so can you guess where this psalm often gets used or when it gets used during the church year? You all have to know this. <laughs> okay, I will. Usually it's used on Thanksgiving. So there you go. Yeah. So... Yeah, this is the psalm of thanksgiving. So we come to the Lord giving him thanks. And I always think of the uh, 10 lepers. The, there were 10 lepers alongside the road. Jesus heals all 10, but only one comes back to give thanks um, to the one who healed him. They all are supposed to go to the temple and thank God. But they 
only one comes back to say thank you. And why should we give thanks? Let's read the last one. Um, see, Dolores, you up for reading? Let's see if I can turn the computer around. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Okay. Yeah, it is. This is one of the most uh, quoted or or in songs that there is. Uh, Psalm 136 has these words. Um, I believe, let's see where else it is. See if I wrote that down. Because I think it's in the Bible like four or five times. Um, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And yeah. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. So, so the Lord is not evil. He is good. Uh, his mercy or his love endures forever. We can count on it. True definition of good is the heck. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I mean it. Exactly. Yeah, God, God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. I love that. There was a Methodist preacher who was a Filipino. Filipino. Yeah, he always would say that God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah, that's an old saying. Yeah. And I send that all to people sometimes. And it is good because sometimes we think, well, God is good to me right now. But tomorrow he's not. But that's not what the scripture says. He's good all the time. All the time. You might not be. Yeah. We, which goes back to what I said at the beginning of this study. Sometimes we base things on emotions rather than on the word of God. And the word of God says it's all the time and it's forever. See, that's another thing about it. You know how you said that when mm -hmm. people don't want to praise the Lord? you know because of feelings yeah you know, yeah like a lot of churches they don't want to because of feelings or pride but they don't <laughs> call it pride they, but that mostly is why it's because of pride yeah no i i had somebody tell me that the other day they says well i don't i don't feel good enough to come I mean, emotionally, yeah. they didn't feel good enough. I said, well, that's when you should come because <laughs> he will lift you up. Yeah, you um, hear people say that the church will fall down if I go. Or yeah, yeah. No, I won't. Of course. God, God is good. Yeah, yeah. Nope. He, he wants you even when things aren't good. A lot of shows, they'll uh, say that. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to hell for doing this and that and stuff, you know. Yeah. And the, that's the, not right. No, it isn't. Jesus died for sin. Really, every sin I've ever done convicts me to hell. Mm -hmm. But it's because of Jesus. It's right. this undeserved love. Yeah. Put our faith in Jesus and not yeah. ourselves. Well, very good. Well, we got so through. One other thing I want to point oh, out. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. That. Okay. You know what it says deny yourself mm -hmm. doesn't mean you know like deny yourself things like a lot of people think no it, or suffering it means deny your strength and ability mm -hmm. and count on the lord yeah you know, deny yourself take up your cross that. and follow me so many churches like they think they have to sacrifice this and sacrifice that because of that very thing no yeah that's referring to uh instead of relying on yourself you're going to rely on the lord well, this one word I heard was a set of you ever heard that? yes i have yeah that's what it's not yeah asceticism um is it was kind of a response there was this time in the church way back in the middle well late middle ages that people were depending on their knowledge and yep this is true and so everything was all about knowing yep. and so this this movement of asceticism started and everything was based on feeling and in emotions well you can guess where this it needed to happen but it, it was we call this the pendulum effect 
that when you you have something yes it's good to base things on the truth like we were talking about but if you have no emotion that's not right either so so what the church did is it it this pendulum just went whoop and now everything is based on emotion and no truth and that's not right either yeah so it really is both um, we need truth and like the psalm talks about emotion in response to truth is very good both are important so shout to the lord all the earth you know so why shout because of the truth <laughs> because he made you because he is our god and we are his people